So I'm going to go over how to add sockets to your character. First thing we're going to do is create a new folder. I just called it items. Um, you can even give it a pretty color. I'm going to give it like a, uh, like a orangish, orangish color. So I'm going to open it up. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a system where you can pick up and drop stuff. When you have it equipped, you can use it. So this will be just the first part of the tutorial series. But yeah, we'll just create the blueprint class. Actor. And then BP pickaxe. Go ahead and open it up. Alright. So when we go in here, we're just going to go ahead and add a sprite. And we're going to call it pickaxe. And we are going to import our art now. Alright, so I'm just going to import my pickaxe. Um, I'm going to create one more folder called tools. Move it right into the tools folder. Open it up. Right click, sprite actions, apply paper 2D settings. Right click again, sprite actions, extract sprites. And we don't really need to adjust anything because we want the hitbox as close as we can. So we're just going to push extract. Save it. Um, open it up. And so here is where we're going to attach the socket on the pickaxe side. So if you come over to the right and scroll down, you'll see sockets, add element, and this is the socket here. And local transform, I'm going to scale it to like 0.5, and then you can move it wherever you want the socket. So left or right, up or down. Um, I'm just going to bring it down. Just have the hand kind of cover here. Socket name. Go ahead and make it hand. But yeah, so you're good there. Go back to your player. Or go to your uh, pickaxe now. Okay. So for your pickaxe. Search. Pick. Attach this. And if you ever want to see if it, you chose the right one, you just double click and you can see here that the socket's ready to go. Compile and save. Now we'll give it a little bit of a detection for the player to pick up. So we'll just add a component. We'll add a... We'll just do a box for this. Box collision. Scale it up by 4. And then the box. Attach. So anything that enters here, you'll be able to pick it up. Okay, so now we're going to create a blueprint interface. And I'm just going to create it here. Go to blueprints, blueprint interface. I'm going to name it BPI for blueprint interface. Interact. And then open it up. We're going to create one function and we're going to call it pickup. And that's it. Save. Open your pickaxe and then go to class settings. On the right here, go ahead and go under implemented interface and do BPI interact. So compile and save. And then we are going to call the event pickup. And that's the interaction interface that you just created. So we're just uh, calling this event. Now we're going to put it in our character's hands. So get player character. Drag out cast to BP player. And then right click and convert to pure cast. And before we go on, head over to your player, BP player. Go to the event graph. I'm going to make a separate input called pickup, input action, IA, pickup, and then I'm going to open it. You don't have to do anything here, just make sure the value type is digital bool, and you're good to go. So close that, go to your IMC player, open it up, I'm going to close these real quick just so it's cleaner, and mappings, go to add, IA, and uh, pickup. And I'm actually going to make this E as well. So IMC player for interact. Um, after you add the binding, that's all you need to do. So go ahead and save and close. You can close the interact interface as well. Go back to your player. BP player. And then we're going to create a little bit of space. And we're going to call the IA pickup. And do get overlapping. Go to overlapping actors and make it for each loop with break. Go ahead and bring it up for the started we're going to put it in the exec and then what we're going to do here is we're going to call our interface so does 
implement interface and we're going to connect our bpi interact so whenever we overlap and we could set the class later if you want to make your game whatever what like fits your game but we want to see if it interacts and then we want to implement the interface so go ahead and create a branch so if you push b and left click it'll create a branch for you so then connect those two up the loop body and then drag off the array element to does not equal which is exclamation point equal we're going to create a variable now and we're going to name it equip and then we're going to go to type an actor and then actor object reference go ahead and drag it compile and then we're going to create another branch so hold b left click or you could search for branch whichever you like connect the two drag off of the true and we're going to do pickup and that's going to be um the interface that you implemented so drag off of target and connect that with the array element go to the pickup drag off and go all the way back and connect it to your break and a good way to clean up the code is just to double click the line you can straighten it out and push q to straighten it and yeah yeah this is how it should look when you're done i'll give you a nice display so pick up get overlapping actors check to see if it has an interface to implement if it's true then pick up the item so now go back to your pickaxe and then event pickup we are going to drag off and do is valid drag off from your player type in equip so off of your equip go ahead and plug into your input object and then is valid detach from actor and from your target go ahead and connect that to your equip and then drag off from detach and do set actor location and rotation drag off the new location and do get world location and then make sure you grab the scene uh scene root sorry and then grab uh drag off of the scene root do get world rotation and plug that in to the new rotation go ahead and do get player character drag off of here cast to bp player right click it convert to pure cast as bp player set equip and then from here you want to drag out and then you also want to drag all the way out and do is not valid as bp player get the sprite so get sprite get flipbook sprite and what this is by the way if you named it something else it's your player so sprite sprite zero this is the, it's grabbing your player character that's what this is doing so you're going to grab your player character to attach the tool so from there pull off of your sprite do attach actor to component connect these two and from your socket name we're actually going to create so go to your player open up his flipbook then open up his sprites and you're going to have to create a socket for every piece of animation which is a bit redundant but i can show you guys a method that'll speed up your process um, first thing you could do is create socket and socket name call it hand and the local transform we're just going to bring it here and a little bit down i'm gonna do 0 0.5 0 0.5 0.5 just like that so it's nice and condensed so i'm gonna go ahead and save and then go to your sprites so you want to find your sprites you click the first one go all the way down and shift click the last one these are all of the sprites that i have at the moment for this character asset actions bulk edit via property matrix we already made a socket for the main character tile set sprite zero. So keep in mind of that, but go ahead and grab one through 15. And you can even search socket just to like 
just to keep it tidy. Push one, and so it adds the socket to all of these. And then you're going to create the socket name to hand. Now, right now, uh, Paper ZD has an issue where it does not let you copy over the location. So if you hover over here, if you hover location, shift and right click, or you can right click and just push copy, but shift and right click copies it. And then if you go here, I'll show you what I mean. If you shift and left click, it says multiple values, right? And you want it all to be the same. So you have to go through and individually edit, but you can, you can shift click each one. Just hope that your animations don't have too many sprites. Otherwise they could just take a moment, but this is a one-time setup. So you can reuse this for any tool you want and you can reuse this socket. Uh, so it's just annoying the first time, but after that you're good. So let's go ahead and go to blueprints. Go to pickaxe. Oh, we'll go to your pickaxe really quick. Since this is a top-down game, if you're if you're making a platformer, you want to keep it looking just like this. But it's a top-down game, so I'm going to rotate it by 270 degrees. So it's facing up at the camera. Compile and save. So now go to your pickaxe and put in the socket name, hand. And this will, since this socket's name is hand, it'll go direct to the socket. For the location rule, snap to target rotation rule snap to target and scale keep relative compile and save and uh, equip i'm gonna go ahead and get a reference to self compile save just to be safe i'm gonna set the collision presets to no collision if you test it right now as you can see you push e you can see it there and it's huge and it's also facing the wrong way. Super, super simple fix. So let's go ahead and go back to the, let's go ahead and go to the player sprites. And we're going to rotate the player socket by 90 degrees really quick. After you set it to 90 degrees, you can see how it's huge, right? That is because we have it scaled up in the viewport. So we're actually going to duplicate this. I want to call it display. So this will be the display icon and this will be the real pickaxe that we use. So let's go ahead and scale this down to one. Compile and save. Go ahead and go to the event graph. On event pickup, I was going to set this to invisible, but I'm actually going to destroy, destroy component. So on event pickup, it disappears. And now you can see um, the pickaxe behind is actually still showing, but if you push E, now the pickaxe is a little bit better in size. So we'll just rotate it so it looks better. And construction script, we're going to make the pickaxe set visibility, new visibility zero. And then we are going to grab the pickaxe set visibility Oh, new visibility, make sure it's true, test it out, play. Now you see it, it's just really small. So we can go to the player sprite, and on this sprite in particular, we could do location, set it to one. So now when you pick it up, the pickaxe is in front. We can rotate it negative 10 now. It's a little better. Let's do the scale. Let's see if this is better. Changing it to one. Yeah. So we can actually negative 70. That's better. And now we'll go to this character. We'll go here. And we're going to copy it. Paste, paste. Shift left click to paste paste and we are actually going to rotate it sorry rotation on the zero and here perfect and you can mess around this is just for tutorial purposes but you can mess around and make this whatever you like so i'm going to bring this a little bit more back and since it's in his left hand 
I'm going to make the location a little minus so I know for sure it's going to be behind the player. So you can see here. Okay, yeah. So let's go ahead and grab his sprite. And make sure it's negative one for facing that way. Negative one. Negative one. And paste. And then for this side rotation and it's actually going to be negative 90 I think we're going to make it one so it's in front paste one paste and I'm going to drag it to his hand paste and I recommend drawing the pickaxe with the hand on it so then you don't have to worry about having it stick out in front of his hand because it will right now so we're going to have it in his left hand, and then we're going to angle it down. So let's go ahead and try it out. Nice. All right, let's go ahead and fix. So left. So it needs to be negative 90. Negative 90. And I can just copy. This is going to be the tedious most tedious spot but just keep in mind that this is a one-time setup so you can reuse this and adjust accordingly all right so again you can adjust your sockets however this is just me showing you how to properly add this to your character and uh, let's let's do the top sprite really quick just to like help you guys out awesome so i pasted play and it's not perfect, you can always polish it up, but I just wanted to show you guys how to properly do this. Um, next up in the series, I want to show you guys how to uh, weapon swap or tool swap. So you can have a HUD, kind of like Minecraft, where you can use your scroll wheel and select which tool you would like. So yeah, that's, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, leave any comments, join my Discord, ask questions. Um, I'm always around, so yeah, cool, cool. Well, thank you so much. See ya.